Okay, so yeah, uh, this mini session, it will be more focusing on uh, the coding part of working with Arduino. Uh, and uh, the main uh, concept is basically about having uh, uh, several things happening at the same time uh, with different timings. So that is the main concept of what I'm going to talk about right now. And uh, let's... I just want to make sure I have... Yeah, good input. Okay, uh, so uh, let's consider uh, exercise... Uh, I remember, don't remember which one it is, but it's the, the one about making two LEDs blink uh, in different intervals. I guess it's uh, perhaps uh, exercise number 12 or something like that. Um, so what happens when we want to achieve concurrency in, uh, in an Arduino software program that we we'll make? Uh, let's think, for example, the case with the uh, LEDs. Uh, we want them to blink, for example, in different completely independent intervals. That is one example. So if we would draw this like this with the timeline, we would see that one of the LEDs, it has basically, each of them has a completely different and uh, independent timeline. So the first LED would perhaps go on and off like this, uh, if the x-axis here is time. And the other one would uh, possibly turn on and off at this interval. And as you see, this one might even change its interval along the way. And uh, if you wanted to do this uh, with delay, using the function delay, it might be complicated. So uh, the first thing you usually learn about uh, working with time in the Arduino is to use the delay function. And that function is basically called like this. Uh, you write delay and then you insert a number and the number is basically a uh, number of milliseconds that the whole program that you're writing should stop. It should do nothing. It should what is usually referred to as block. So the program is blocking and is doing nothing and the whole Arduino, the whole microcontroller, can't do anything else while it's waiting. So it's only waiting for, let's say, yeah, 100 milliseconds. So if that happens, uh, uh, if we would use a delay to try to achieve this one, we m might try to actually put, uh, turn on both of these, at this point in time, then have a delay that range from this point to this point. And at this point in time, we will turn off this one and do nothing with this one. And then we would need to have one more delay, wait all the time until this happens. And then it seems these two ones are happening at the same time. So we will turn off this one and turn on this one. And as you see, as I progress, this would get super complicated and it would be very cumbersome. And what, ha what happened if I re realized that, oh, well, I actually wanted to move this point a little bit back to perhaps here. Then I would actually have to change this delay here and this delay here. So working with delay is kind of uh, very inconvenient when your program becomes more complex and especially when you want to do things, different things uh, independent of each other and with different timings. Uh, so what you want to achieve uh, when working with concurrent events is to have a, a non-blocking uh, firmware or a non-blocking program in your Arduino code. So basically never use delay. As soon as you introduce a delay somewhere in your code, you will have uh, uh, some amount of time where the processor or the microcontroller, yeah, the Arduino itself, can't do anything else. And this will uh, uh, create less resp uh, responsiveness and uh, uh, make the program less, be less flowy. I just realized now that my camera hanged, so I will have to reset it. And hopefully I can make it work again.
yeah, okay, so it's up and running again. Sorry for that. So, uh, how can we achieve uh, different events with different timings instead then? Well, there is another function uh, that is available to you when you're coding in the Arduino environment, and it's called Millis. This is one rather popular way to achieve uh, what we want now with different events, with different timings. And Millis is an, a function with an empty argument. You just call it, and this m function will return to you the number of milliseconds that has elapsed since the Arduino was turned on. So uh, basically what you get is a timestamp. Uh, a timestamp of how long has it been since the Arduino was turned on. So basically you would I would say that you have... Uh, uh, um, yeah, this function will basically give you uh, the time whenever you need it. Uh, as soon as you call on this function. So if you call on this function uh, one second after the Arduino has started, it would basically return 1000. Okay, so what you can do is to, instead of trying to have delays in your code, you could try to ask what is the time? What is the time now? What is the time now? What is the time now? And you will do this all over uh, again and again and again. And depending on what result you get, you can do different things. Uh, and what you can do is to save the timestamp. When you ask, what is the time? How long has it been? Uh, you can save the result in a variable and use this variable uh, as, uh, as, an, uh, as a stamp, as a timestamp for when an event happened. So if I would, for example, say that I want uh, an LED to be turned on one second uh, after the Arduino was turned on. I could ask all the time for millis. I could say, save it into a variable. Let's call it, for example, um, now. <laughs> and then I will ask, wait, if now is greater than thousand then let's turn on the LED. So this is a basic example uh, that you could input into your uh, main loop and this would result in, uh, well, so I, I didn't write the actual code for turning on the LED here, I just wrote, yeah as a comment here inside this, this block, we should turn on the LED. So it would actually be a digital write function there. So this would basically then uh, turn on the LED one second after the Arduino was turned on. Uh, so what happens then if you want to use uh, intervals and make things repeat? Then we could make use of another trick and we could, uh, besides saving uh, the current time in a variable like this, we could also save uh, a timestamp when things are happening. So let's scrap this one for now and take a new example. I will have, uh, in the start of my, soft, of my program, I will have a unsigned long, which is basically also a, uh, a big number. So an integer like this one, uh, that's a whole number, an integer, but unsigned long is basically uh, a, a, a bigger integer number. So I, I will say like led blink stamp and I will initialize this variable to perhaps zero. This is outside the main loop. Then comes the loop uh, and inside here I want basically the LED to turn on and off uh, with some kind of interval. So what I will say is that I check what is the time. So I call it here, millis. This will return the time since the Arduino was turned on in milliseconds. And how do we work with timestamps? Well, we can basically compare one timestamp to another. How long is it between two events in time? You can do this by just subtracting. So for example, if you would have five seconds in and you want to see uh, how long ago it was something that happened three seconds in. 
how long ago was that? Well, you take five seconds minus three seconds, then you would know, okay, that was two seconds ago. So you have the current time minus the last time I actually blinked the LED. And I will say, ask myself, is, was it longer ago, was it more time ago than, for example, uh, 1000? If that was the case, then I perhaps want to uh, blink the LED. So I also now write uh, switch LED uh, uh, on slash off. Turn on or turn off the LED. But I also have to keep track now. Okay, I did this thing. Let's also record when I did it. So we'll, I will update the LED blink stamp with the new value of current time. LED blink stamp equals millis. So basically this code here would blink uh, the LED uh, or basically turn it on or off each second throughout the whole code. And as you see, there is no delay called in here. Basically, we are asking, is it time to do this thing here? Is it time to do this? Yes, it is time to do that. Okay, let's do it and also update the time when we did it, this timestamp here. And then this timestamp will be used as a reference in the next question. So basically, we are always asking, is it time? Is it time? Is it time? And at some point, there will be time to do it. And then we will update the timestamp and start waiting again for the next uh, uh, time when it will be time to do it. <laughs> Using the word time a lot of times here. <laughs> OK, so I will jump into the code. And perhaps I should also show you what is running right now. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit on this part here. So I made kind of a all over the place example here. Uh, the exercise was about making two LEDs blink independently. And as you see, they are doing that right now. The left side, I think, uh, the left LED, I think is blinking with uh, uh, an interval of uh, 500 milliseconds. So basically, it turns on and off each second. The other one is blinking, I don't know, yeah, a little bit different now. But what I have actually done now is to connect it to this potentiometer. So if I take this potentiometer and and turn it, you will see that it changes the pace at how the LED on the right side is blinking. So this would not be possible at all if we were using uh, the delay function in our code. Uh, but now we can achieve this because we are always working with uh, the current time and trying to compare it to uh, events that has happened and should happen. Uh, so let's go into the code and have a look then. Uh, in the start, we have some pins, which you might be familiar with. I just save them here and say, OK, I connect one LED to pin number three. I connect another LED to pin number four. And uh, yeah, I also have named this pot pin, basically the potentiometer. I have connected it to a zero. Uh, and uh, then I can use these variables later down in my code. Also in the setup, I set them up as you should be also familiar with uh, by now. Uh, pin mode, I want the LEDs to be output. Uh, the button here, I don't think we need to discuss the button because it's not used that much. Um, uh, but the LEDs are there. Uh, and then I have these uh, variables. So basically, I want to save every time I do something with LED, one, I want to save that event as a timestamp. 
and I use the unsigned long because millis, the function, uh, this function, which we discussed earlier, that function returns an unsigned long. So I want to save the result from that function into a variable of this data type, the unsigned long. Basically a very large number because uh, milliseconds can grow and grow and grow if the Arduino is uh, turned on for a very long time. And thus we want to have some uh, nice space to save uh, the, the variable, the data. Uh, also, I have here a variable which is basically the interval for LED1. So I named that variable LED1 interval. And basically we have the same setup for LED2. Uh, LED2 stamp. And I just start, uh, start the values with zero. These will of course be overwritten later uh, any time we do something with the LED2. And the same goes for LED1. So I just initialize them to zero. And as you see here, I initialize also the LED2 interval to zero. Uh, basically, it's a, uh, an indication for myself that, well, I will write zero now because I will actually overwrite it with some more relevant value inside my loop later. So here we are then, the main loop. This loop will go over and over again and loop throughout the whole uh, program. I will lower the uh, font size just a bit now so we can fit the whole loop. Okay, so you will probably recognize this thing here. We ask if the current time uh, minus the last time we did something with LED1. How long ago was that? What is the difference in time? How long from now is it to when this happened? So that uh, we get that by doing this subtraction. And then we say, okay, that duration, so long ago was that, is that longer ago than how often we want the LED number one to do something? If it is longer ago, then we update the timestamp and say, okay, we should uh, do something now. We also say, uh, this is the stamp, this is the time at, uh, at uh, when we were doing something with LED number one. And then we actually do something with uh, uh, LED number one. And here I read the current value from the LED number one. I invert it and I write it back with this. So basically I switch it from on to off or from off to on with this row here. And as you see, this will not block. There is no delay or anything here. I just do this when it's time to do it according to this if statement. We go down here and I read the potentiometer and I save it into a value. I transform it to a new uh, range because as you are familiar with as well, uh, the potentiometer goes between 0 and 1023. I uh, rescale that range to be instead between 2000 and 20. Because uh, yeah, when I have the potentiometer all the way to the left, I want the uh, blinking to be very, very slow. And this is, of course, a longer interval between the blinkings. So that's why I have 2000 on the left side here. And the more I turn it to the right, the potentiometer, uh, the less uh, uh, powers it should be between the blinkings, all the way down to 20 uh, milliseconds. And I use this interval then uh, in, in a similar fashion in the comparison here to see how long ago did we change the LED? I ask that here. Well, was it longer ago than the interval we want uh, for the LED number two? If it was, then update the stamp with the millis function and also uh, s change the LED. So this is the relevant part of this sketch. I also just uh, print, printed the reading from the button just to show that also uh, the, the rest of this whole main loop can, uh, can contain other things which are also uh, responsive and run all the time. So the, the button is read all, all the time and it's printed all, all the time to the serial port, to the serial monitor, while I also check these things uh, above it in the code here to see that I should change or not change the state of the LEDs. 
Okay, so I'm aware this, uh, especially if you're not so used to programming, this is a lot to take in and uh, um, it might be hard to get used to. But uh, I could basically say you could use this type of this type of code, which I'm highlighting now, as a, some kind of template to have things happen uh, in a certain at a certain interval in your code without blocking your program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it for now.